<laughs> Ooh, shh. No, I ain't hurting Pootie Cat. You know what I'm doing out here, son. I'm not looking for gold, but you know what? Something's out here looking for me. Oh, I keep hearing noises up in those woods. I've heard stories about stuff in that woods. All right, we're gonna be looking for gold today. Now I'm gonna be hunting gold. Hopefully nothing's hunting me, you know what I'm saying, boy? All right, now get over here, boy, and take a look at this. I got a spot right here, and I'm gonna teach you how to find gold in these creeks and rivers. All right, let me get my stuff set up, all right? So you know what I'm gonna say, you better. So come on, let's go, shh. All right, now, what's the first thing? First things first, son of Jim. You better be on land that's open and ain't already pre-claimed or private property. You hear me, boy? All right, now the second thing is it better be a gold-producing area. Why are you going to waste your time if it ain't? All right, number three, when you get to creeks like this, you're going to be looking for the inside bin here. You see that? See it, boy? Right in there. See that inside bin of that creek? All right, so... What are you gonna look for next? Come here and I'll show you, boy. All right, now this is important, so put your thinking caps on, son. All right, you see the inside curve of this creek? See that? You see it? You notice anything about it? That's right. I got a whole bunch of fine gravels and little pebbles out here. And then what do I got at the head of it? See that? All those heavies down there that dropped out right away, just like in a sluice box. So what you're gonna do is when you come to these inside bends, you're gonna look for that. You're gonna look for those big, heavy stones. Big stones, big gold. Little stones, little gold. So, and each creek's gonna be different. So you're gonna look for those big piles of, of cobbles, and especially if they're black. Black, shiny stones are usually heavy and filled with iron. They're usually mafic in, in structure, and that's what you're gonna look for. And you can see where it turns to fine sand. There ain't gonna be nothing out there. If it is, it's gonna be little tiny gold. If I got any gold, it's gonna be right in there and that's where I'm gonna sample. Also, you gotta look at how this, these creeks are cutting in to these banks. You can see that I've got a whole bunch of benches out here. You start finding gold in here, you might wanna check the benches because sometimes the gold was deposited from on these benches a long time ago and then what happened, the river cut into them and put it down there. So I always see people in the creeks and they get excited when they find a little gold on the inside bin. Well, you need to figure out where it came from, son. Because that's the real gold. So I'm going to get on down there and take a sample. You know what I'm saying. So you better know. So come on. Let's go. Oh, shh, shh, shh. Now the idea is to sample in three split places. Up here in the head, middle, and tail. And you're gonna trench this way. So you trench, put it in their pan. The idea is you're trying to find the pay streak. You find some here, here and here, draw a straight line. There's your pay streak, it's as simple as that, son. But the first thing you need to do is determine if there's gold in there. And yeah, you're gonna get wet. Now when you're raking rocks, if you don't classify, you need to bring the rocks to the back of the pan, not to the front. Remember, you want low water pressure in there, so if you can't find a spot, and the creek's going this way, you pan that way. All right, I don't think you can see this, but I got two little pieces of fly poop in there. I know there's gold in here, now the question is, is where's the pay streak? And where's the source? What you're gonna do is you're gonna compare that. You're gonna sample there and there. And what you're looking for is to see if those pieces get any bigger or rougher, coarse as they call it. That's important. Remember, you're a detective. You're not just to find gold. You need to find the pay streak. And if possible, you need to find the source. So I'm gonna figure out where that's at. Before I do that, I'm gonna show you some other places you should check. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? Ah. So come on. Oh, shh. So come on, let's go. Ooh. All right, now here's another one people miss all the time. What's that? These little tributaries that feed into these creeks or rivers. Now people find gold in these creeks and they get all excited and happy. Well, I tell them, that's great, but you want to find out where it's coming from. If you can get to the source, that's what you want. And the first thing you do is when you start finding gold, you work your way what? Upstream. 
And what you're doing, you're looking to see if the pieces are getting bigger. Now, if all of a sudden the gold stops right over there, then I know that it's coming from around here. So you're gonna look for these little tributaries that feed into it, just like this one. And what do you see? See these gravel zones here? That's all gravel. Could be from an old river channel, could from when this place was a lake, could be from glacial flow, could be all kinds of stuff. Washing it into here, had gold in it. So what you need to do, that's right. You're gonna sample across this bunker. You're gonna dig a small trench, pan it out right there. If you start finding gold, you know you're on a winner. You're gonna follow this up. Every 20 feet, you're gonna trench again. And you're gonna look for gold. If there's gold, compare to the last gold. Is it getting bigger? Is it getting coarser? Is it getting rougher? So you're gonna keep following it up and see. Does it stop? If it does, you know you're close to the source. You need to go left, right, straight ahead. It's called triangulation. You need to find a source. So anyway, that's what we're gonna do here because I know that this thing is probably feeding gold into that creek. And it's probably coming from up there because I think there's an outcropping. So you know what I'm gonna say, huh? You better. So come on, let's go. Ooh, okay. Now, look at this, son of Jim. All right, now, the tributary splits into two smaller little feeders. I checked the one on the right, didn't get nothing. Checking the one on the left, and look at this. Ooh, isn't that a perfect spot? All right, what do I got? Well, right in here, you can see where I've got a wide pool. So it comes down, it's caught in between these two rocks, and then all of a sudden it widens out into a bowl. What happens is, is the pressure drops on that water, which drops the gold out, if any. There's a bunch of rocks in there that'll hold that gold. If it was smooth, I wouldn't even look at it. I got these two big rocks right here that create a pinch point and then it swells out. That's perfect because you're going from high pressure zone to a low pressure zone. Low pressure, gold will drop out. You're gonna sample in here. This is a good spot. If you find nice pieces of gold in here, you're gonna keep working your way up. And that's what we're gonna do now, boy. And that's what I suggest you do. So you, I'm not even gonna say it because I keep hearing something come down out of the tree line. Gotta go get my rifle. <laughs> Ooh, this is perfect. Now, what am I standing on, boy? What does that look like? That's bedrock. See that? Perfect. All right, so what are you gonna do? Well, bedrock is fantastic for catching gold, especially if it's rough. If it's smooth, forget about it. Gold's gonna flow right over the top of it. All right, so what are you gonna do? You're gonna look for the big rocks that are sitting on top of this bedrock. And then what are you gonna do? You're gonna move the rocks up, and you're gonna watch out because critters like to live under them, so watch your hands, and you're gonna sample, because the gold's gonna get trapped underneath these stones, and it can't go down any further because the bedrock is bedrock, son. Come on, you know this. You're gonna sample this area like this, especially bedrock, boulders, all this stuff is good. Ooh, and this looks tasty too. So you find a lot of gold here, or any gold here, you know that you're not far from the source or from where the source used to be. A lot of times the source is eroded away millions of years ago. So if you come across a bunch of bedrock like this and you're already in a creek with gold, sample it. Tear all these rocks out and clean up. Use a little brush, whatever you got. I know you don't have a backpack out here in the middle of nowhere. That's why you bring a brush. Brush it all up, take it back down the creek and pan it. Inspect those pieces with a jeweler's loop and find out are they getting bigger or are they flatter and smoother. It'll tell you if, how much it's traveled. It'll tell you if you're getting closer. These are things you need to do. Remember, you're a detective now. So if I find gold here, I know that I got this wide open meadow. So the trick is, where did it come from? <laughs> and if I find out where it come from, I'm gonna get every speck of it. Ooh, so, so you know what I'm gonna say. Ooh, I'll tell you what I'm gonna say. So come on, let's go. All right. Oh, look at this little monkey right here. All right, look at this. Got a big, huge piece of basalt. It's an extrusive volcanic rock. It's got a lot of iron and magnesium in it, son, if you know anything about mafic rock. So anyway, this thing is sitting up here high. And I know that there's a reason why it's here, and I'm not gonna go into that. Is I'm on one of these tiny little feeder creeks. I got a whole bunch of debris caught behind here whenever they have the, the heavy rain seasons come through here. So what are you gonna do? Well, first thing you do is you're gonna sample in front of it. As the water comes forward, as it hits it, it breaks that pressure zone, it drops it down, creates eddy currents in the front. And as it flows around, the pressure zones are in the back or even less. So first thing you do is you come around the front, 
you're going to sample down far, especially if it's on bedrock. Now, a better thing to do is to get this monker out of here. Now, we're going to put another video out there that shows you how you can get these rocks out of your way effectively and quickly. Because I hate these things. They get in my way. The gold's underneath them. How do I move them? I'm going to show you how to move them, son. And I'm going to show you how to move them real fast. So anyway, you're going to sample in the front. And then you're going to sample around here in the corner in the back. You see that? As the water comes in through the front, it hits this. Bam! All of a sudden, the water stops. Ooh, before it decides to go left or right. As it does so, it drops all of its energy. It creates a low pressure zone. The gold drops out. Bam! Right there. So, and if it's on bedrock, the gold's going to work its way underneath this rock. I know I'm close to the source. Just a matter of finding it. And this is where your little VLFs come in, too. Because if I've got any outcroppings of quartz in this mesothermal zone, whoo, I tell you what, that VLF will find it. I'm going to get on up in there, son, and I'm going to take a look around because it's a big bowl. And I just know that gold's in there. So you know what I'm going to say. Woo! Ah! So come on, let's go. 